the new reviews are, are super negative. Stop being mean. Hey, everybody. Bathany Boy, Boy Tano, Tano here, the internet's busiest music person. And it's time for a review of the new Foxing record, Dealer. These guys are a St. Louis rock band fusing elements of emo, indie rock, and a bit of post-rock as well. This is their second full-length album here. They are coming off of their relatively successful commercial debut, Albatross, of which there were numerous positive reviews. I got a lot of recommendations to check that album out last year, saying it was amazing and it was really emotional and really powerful. So given those recommendations and the fact that I know the band mashes together these particular genres, I went into this thing expecting a lot of crescendos, a lot of beautiful instrumentation. And that's basically what I got here. And, and on paper, that's all well and good. I mean, I heard uh, The World is a Beautiful Place mash together a lot of those same elements earlier this year, and I thought it was great. But Foxing does it in a very different way. In, in such a way where it resulted in one of my least favorite listening experiences of this year. Yeah, I'm not beating around the bush here. I, I didn't like this. Not at all. And I think it comes down to a, a handful of major aspects. It's, it's one, the vocals. They whine they whimper, and they moan through this entire album when they aren't mumbling incoherently trying to convey this soul-sucking lack of emotion. They're reaching into their upper range, into this really kind of nasal delivery that has me thinking the band believes that they're the next Radiohead or Cigarose. The singing is boyish, and it left no impression on me whatsoever, especially emotionally. And emotion is all the band really seems to be conveying here, because the music is really nothing to write home about. It consists of mostly very stashed away in the back drum beats, some twinkling basic guitar arpeggios, and one cliche post-rock crescendo after another. The band essentially taking advantage of the discovery many forgotten groups made five to ten years ago that you essentially don't really need to put that much effort into songwriting as long as you can hand your audience instrumentation that they think is beautiful and emotionally stirring just by kind of going through this dynamic grow higher loud oh it's booming oh fall fall soft get quiet it's dramatic. Wash it, rinse it, repeat it. Wash it, rinse it, repeat it. It doesn't really matter what the chord progressions are because the chord progressions are so bland and uninteresting and so run-of-the-mill that they don't really matter. It's all about these bland rushes of guitars and arranged instrumentation, which if we were going to be honest with ourselves, tons and tons of post-rock bands throughout the 2000s and the 90s did it better. So on this thing we have weak vocals, painfully rudimentary instrumentals, and nothing in sight in terms of a compelling or memorable song. This album does absolutely nothing for me, and the band must be releasing this record assuming that the people listening have no clue who these bands are who they so obviously borrow from in a really cheap way. Now there were a few moments that stood out to me on this record though, a couple. The string sections on track six, uh, but the string sections on track six, which goes in a more instrumental direction, were actually pretty powerful. Once you just take the vocals out of the equation and you just kind of really rely on those string arrangements, the, the music is quite nice. The vocals on Eiffel actually struck me as impassioned, and this is the only song on the record that actually delivered a, a crescendo that I thought was legitimately powerful and explosive. It was a crescendo that really had that emotional roller coaster ride feel that you look for in a rock crescendo of this style. And the shoutier approach that the vocals took on Glass Coughs, uh, I can't say I loved it, but it was definitely a better change of pace from what's typically going on vocally on a majority of these tracks. You know, this, this record, its most cardinal sin is that it's generic. It really has nothing that interesting or distinct going on about it, but it is so generic and so lacking in exciting ideas that it's painful, and it's the kind of pain that slowly draws more and more intense as the album continues on, kind of like I'm slowly being pulled apart on a torture rack or something. 
so I mean I'm really feeling like a light to decent three on this thing. Transition. Have you given this record a listen? If you have, you probably liked it more than me, didn't you? That's fine. That's cool. No reason to sweat a difference of opinion, son. Forever.